Um, hi everyone and welcome to today's session on Rook End Games. You can see this book I've got here. Uh, there'll be a special prize today um, decided by Keith and myself um, to win a copy, a signed copy of this book. And it is a fantastic book. I've been going through it myself this week. Um, so today we're going to be looking at Rook End Games and we've got somebody who's well, widely respected as probably one of the world's best Rook End Game players or End Game players for that matter. Um, Keith loves End Games and um, he's here to show some of his techniques and I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, so he was also the um, European Senior uh, Champion in 2014. So he's a European Champion as well. So you're in good hands today. Um, so before we get started, um, I did send you all some exercises um, prior to the class. So I'm not sure whether you've had time to look at those, but if you have, then um, I'm just gonna quickly go through those um, before we get into today's session. So the first one, um, hopefully you'll be aware of is just Rook B3 and it's the third rank defense. Um, so that's just a must know. Um, after a long game, you're probably gonna be quite tired and just knowing that it's a simple draw. And as soon as black moves the pawn forward, the rook goes behind and just gives some checks from behind. The king's got nowhere to hide. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, second one. Um, you just move the rook down to the F1 square and black can't really do anything by moving the pawn forward. However, if that pawn was on the F file, um, black could make progress in other ways. But when it's a G pawn, the passive defense works. Um, is there anything you want to add to that, Keith, or do you think that's all right? Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, um, it's you don't move, you don't move the, um, you, you don't want the black king to get into the into the position. Um, if the black king gets into the position, then um, then then there's mating threats. Um, but in this position, there's no there's no possibility of a mating threat because you need more space. So if we, I don't know if we can't, we probably can't physically move it across. But yeah, if we can, I won't do it now. But yeah, there's this like, okay. idea, isn't yeah. there? Where if you could move it across, and the rook can kind of sneak around round round the side. So if you had one more square, you could play G. Um, we'll, we'll, it would be F three, but we'll, yeah, we, we could play G three, and then um, rook. If you imagine, like next to the eight, it would be like I, uh, you know, the, the one in further along. You'd go there threatening a back rank mate. But here you can't threaten. You can, there's not enough room to threaten a back rank mate. Do, do, yeah. you, do, you guys, do you guys know what I mean by that? So they're, um, they're a clever group, and they can. Um, yeah. They can so if you if there was like an I file, if there was an I file next to the H file, you would be able to after playing G three, you'd be able to go rook to I. Two, and then you'd be saying, "Look, I won, mate," <laughs> and and there'd be no way of stopping that because if the king went to h1 to stop it, then there would be a, a, a g2 check, winning winning a rook wherever that rook was, even if it was over. Yeah, on, okay, on we'll go through these fairly fast before we get on to the. That's concept. a bit abstract, but it's, yeah, it's quite. But just know that if it's a g pawn, you can use the passive defense to draw the game. Um, g and h pawns are very harmless pawns in these endings. It's the other four that you need to worry about. Excellent. Um, this one here, we'll just move the king to g1. Um, obviously, black was threatening checkmate. And when the rook goes to a1, we uh, move our king to the side. And this is an interesting position because black tries um, to, well, actually, if black tries to go rook f1, which is probably the best try for a win. Um, in fact, I remember a few years ago, it was probably about five years ago, Keith was doing some rook end games at our house, and he said that. You know, when in these positions, he know he knows it's a draw, but he messes around for ages, and then eventually puts the rook on f1. And at that point, his opponent's thinking, "Oh, it's just a draw," and then they forget what they're doing. <laughs> um, so it keeps got some cheeky techniques in the end game, which which have worked well for him. Um, but if you know your stuff, um, you just move your rook to the side. And um, the problem now for black is that if the king moves, we check from the side, and if the rook goes to e1, then you, you should go back. It's the easiest way um, to, to draw in these positions, just going back because the king can't move forward. Um, the I'm king wants to go to f2, but because the rook's on f8, he can't because you're leaving the pawn on free. Um, so this is the point of rook f8, because if, if the king goes to e2 instead, then the, the white king can go to g2. So after, if you put the rook back on f8, then if black plays um, king e3 there to try and move the pawn, um, 
sorry, yeah, with the white rook, sorry, with yeah. the white rook on, on like say B1 or whatever it is, or H1. If we, yeah, in this, in this position, with, if we put the, the black rook say on A1 or somewhere like A1, if, 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 um, if black now plays king E3 to try and push the pawn, then white's got, white can play king G2 and approach. So if, if black plays king E3 here, I don't know, is it black's move or white's move? Um, anyway. Black just moved the rook to A1. Okay, we'll, pa we'll pass for white and play rook F, rook F7. Yep. And now if white plays king E3 to try and push the pawn, black can, um, white can stop with, with, with um, king G2, stopping the pawn going forward. Brilliant. And so this is the right, and this is why you want you need to go. If we go back again, we if we play, we try to do it. This is the reason why black plays the sneaky rook f one because the idea of the sneaky rook f one is if you play rook f one um, for black, yeah. then then if white does um, f one, sorry, not not yeah, e one f one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And now and now if 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 um if uh, let me get this right. Yeah, if now if white just carelessly plays rook f eight. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going back on the notes. So um. Okay. Yeah. And and now black black can play king e two, and um and the point of king e two is the rook's defending the pawn, so therefore it can't the, the pawn can't be taken. So if we play king e two for black here, then um, white hasn't got the defense king g two because f three check. Yeah, yeah, that makes, makes, sense. makes I've progress. Got, I've got it. This is the point. This is the point of rook f one. So it's it's rather somewhat little. It's cleverly threatening king e two. Yeah, let's just um, go back to the start of the position just to m make sure everyone understands that. So, um, yeah, so we're, this is a starting position that they were having to go at for um, the pre-work. And rook goes to a1 check and king goes to h2. And um, here, if black goes to rook f1, as Keith was just demonstrating, the idea of this is to move the king to e2. So if white just moves the rook, um, say, to f7, um, now the king goes here, you can't go king g2. Uh, well, you can, but you'll lose because um, f3 is checked. Um, so, like I say, if there's any questions, ask them in the chat. I'm not going to spend too much time on the um, pre-work because we want to get to the exciting positions. So, if you've got any questions, please do ask now, um, and then we'll go on to the next one. But I think that's really important to understand that. It looks quite complicated, but um, it's not as complicated as it looks. But uh, uh, You say um, that about all rock and games, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so now... Um, in this position, um, which was number four, um, for the um, pre-work, a uh, rook b2. Now this is a must know um, position. And in fact, I'm just looking at the chat. We've got some questions. Um, what should white do to draw? Okay, let's just go back then. So if white wants to draw, um, white just needs to make sure they don't, um, in this position here, um, after rook f1. After rook f1, yeah. you, play, you so, give the rook lots of space to check, so you go rook a8. Don't go here. I'll do that with a red arrow. You go here, and then if black tries to move the king, you just check from the side. You can just yeah. keep on and on checking, because the black rook's badly placed. The black rook is, can't block any checks. So you can just white can go check, 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 check forever. Mm. Yeah, exactly. You just give checks from the side. And then when the king goes back, you go king g2, and you get to, into quite an easy draw. Yeah, I think what, what Keith was um, saying to me like years ago when we were discussing this position is, you know, he, he keeps going and he tires his opponents out in these positions. So, you know, he'll mess around and then his opponent will get fed up and move the rook there instead of going here. And then suddenly he's winning. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's different methods to trick your opponent at the end of the game and it's, um, it's great. But yeah, that's a really good question, Ryan. Um, okay, next position. Now, this is a must know. Um, stalemate trap. So rook f2. Um, so when the position's on B1 and the black rook's on, yeah, in this position, white's only got one way to draw. If you put a rook back on B1 and, um, and, and, and it, if white does anything except for rook B2, um, so if we, if the rook's just come from B1, hasn't it? I don't know if we can go, it, will yeah. it allow us to go back and move? Yeah, let's just go back. So if the rook starts on B1. Now, if white plays anything except for rook B2 here, then um, black, will, black will go E2 check and then rook G1 check and just win. Or, or the only way to stop e2 check and then rook g1 check is rook e1. But the problem with rook e1 is that, that you then, so if we, play, if, we play, if we play the rook to e1 here to stop e2 check, so it's very, very passive. If we play rook e1 for one here, then black wins by going, by going sideways. Black wins by going rook h6, threatening mate. And white, so if we go rook e1, as a, this, is a, this is a bad attempt to draw the rook e1. Um, yeah, so... Um... Sorry, I just had a notification. Someone doesn't have the details. So, um, rookie yeah. one. 
Yeah. That, that fails because then you go rook h6, threatening mate. And the only way to stop mate is king g1. Yes. And then you can go e2. And and white's powerless. White can only move the rook. He doesn't matter where. White, white can't move the king. White can only move the rook. So let's go. Let's try rook a1. They're all the same. Let's go rook a1 for white. And then you go rook check, rook g6 check. Yes. King must go to the h file. Yes. And then king, and then king f2, and you're going to win the rook in a few. You're going to win the rook in a couple of moves time. You're even threatening mate on the side. So you're just going to go, you're going to win a rook. So passive defense doesn't work. So if we go back to the. Yeah. Go back to the, gonna, uh, can somebody just send me the Zoom details in the chat? Because as somebody that doesn't have the details, would you be able to do that for me, please? Somebody. Maybe Harry, you're quite good at this kind of thing. <laughs> can you just send them? Um, to me in the chat um, for a moment. Thank you, if somebody could do, yeah, thank you very much. Um, okay, so, um, yeah, sorry, Keith. So let's, so, let's carry so on. Yeah, so so, the, so the, in that, in that um, position, starting position, we can roll it back to starting. Yeah, position. of course. So let's go back here. Yeah, so in this position, passive defense fails to rook h6. And White's got got to deal with some really unpleasant mating threats. So what, what the only way to to draw this is yeah, and if and um, yeah, the only way to draw this is rook b two, which relies on the trick because now rook h six, the winning try rook h six um, would succeed except for one move. Do, do we all know what that move is? Do we all know what? Tell us in the is? chat what that move is. Does anybody not know what White's move is here? Yeah, just tell us in the chat. Um, this is a must know. Only one defense. And it's the reason for the second rank defense, the reason for the rook being on the second rank is because of this next brilliant move. <laughs> yeah, the stalemate idea. Yeah, yeah, stalemate. So can you all see the stalemate? Check. If the king moves away, then all the threats evaporate, all the threats disappear. If, if king g3, you can just move the rook. Um, well, actually, wait a minute. King g3, you probably best to check again. You probably best to check again. Well, you can actually draw. You can also draw with rook f8 and then keep the king cut off. So, actually, that's the simple way to draw. So, if we instead of playing rook g2, if we play, have I got control of this as well? No. <laughs> if we go rook f8 here, then suddenly there's just no possibility for black to win the game. There's no plan. You can't. You need to be able to play king f3 at some point. White, white's running king e2 here. And if black plays rook h2 to stop king e2, then white just waits and black's. Um, actually, I've got a little bit. That's right, then white can just check, 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 check forever. So if black plays rook h2 here to stop king e2, then black can check forever. I just check and check and check and check. Just don't ever stop checking until the king goes all over the board to attack the rook. And then white, black's got no winning chances at all here. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, just gonna um, unshare my screen just for one moment because um, we're having somebody's having problems getting into the meeting. Um, cool. So let me just send the details to them, and then we'll be ready to continue. Well done if you managed to get into the meeting, Alex. I'll just email it to you. Okay. Um, so shall we zoom through the last few of these yeah, and get okay, on for the yeah, game? Let's um let's get zoom through and then um we'll be ready. Literally. To move on. Yeah, yeah, let's um manage to get through. So um okay, so exercise number five then. Do you want to just explain to them how to do that, please? Um so where are we? This is um is this white white to play and draw, is it? Um yeah, white white to play, what should white do? Um rook a seven. Okay, seven. You have to you have to go as far away from the king as possible in order to create checks from the side. If you can't check from the side, then you're in trouble. The pawn will, the pawn will just go to e two, and it will be difficult to stop. Yeah, going to e one. Space here to just check from the side, and then you just check and check and check, and then bring the rook back to the first rank again when the king's gone right away. Yeah, okay, and then number six, um, here, this is a slightly harder version um, of defending because you can't do the third rank defence, so you have to go behind. Um, and now, um, king to c3, um, again, it's, it's a, we do not go the wrong, there, you do not go there. Wrong, 
Yeah, that's the wrong way. Yeah, yeah that loop this. So that's why we've written that in the notes for anyone because then we don't have time. But you have to go uh, that way so the rook can attack on the long side. Yeah, the yeah. reason why you don't go king d1 is because your own king gets in the, in the way of the checks that you want to give. So if you go if you go instead king d1 there, um, then if yeah. then it, this is quite an important thing. If you're king d1, then the problem is is that black can go rook um, a h1 check. King e2 is forced. And then king c2, and now and now what you want to do here is what 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 I'm, what I want to do here is kind of checks on like squares like g2, but the white king gets in the way of those checks, so white can't defend. White's own king is a nuisance, so there's actually white white can't create any central checks in that position, and so black will just keep on going forward with the king and pawn until the pawn queens. Yeah, so you need to go to b1, and then you can do it. And that way you've got you've created. A lot of space where your rook can keep. Oh, checking. it's still not. It's still not easy. Um, somebody said, and um, why not rook d seven? Rook d seven is fine, but why not give yourself more space? Oh, rook d seven here, and you get mated, don't you? Um. Oh, oh, sorry, you're saying. That. Sorry, you're saying. Yeah, rook d seven is also fine. I think yeah. even rook d six, even rook d six is fine. Possibly even rook d five. But fine. why wouldn't you go the furthest away? Um, in this position anyway, because these end games, there's probably lots of ways, but go for the simplest option. Um, so in general, keep your rook as, yeah, give your rook as much space as possible is, is the golden rule. So then we go to the short side, um, and after rook h1, check, uh, we move our king to a2, king c2. Now this is where it gets gets a bit a bit tricky, it's not so easy, you need to remember to go uh, rook g8, so you can check from the side, and because um, black is able to move the pawn forward, you need to be very clever here, so rook g2 check, and then you need to play rook g1, and this is quite hard to draw, but by stopping the king going to the back rank, um, this is a draw. Um, we're probably not going to go into too much detail on this now because to c3 got... you wait, you just you just pass, and then black's got it's not it's not easy for black to make progress here. Because no. if king if king d3 discovered check, then king b3 and rook b2 check is the only way to try and make progress. Rook b2 check, then you go king a3. And, um, and now the problem is, is that there's a whole load of checks coming again from, from white. A whole load of checks, and that king will never get anywhere, it gets safe. Lots of checking space. So the black, um, and then you see, check the king right away, right away from the pawn, and then you can stop the pawn very easily. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and then the last one from the pre-white, this is quite easy win, just put the rook behind the pawn, and then... Already... Have you guys done all the, done these positions already? Have you looked at well, these I sent them out to them, so I guess some people have. Maybe not everyone had a chance because they've been busy with schoolwork. But um, yeah. Um, okay. So um, no, Theo. Um, rook d7 is is winning. But as I mentioned before, uh, you might as well go to d8 um, because you need to give more space if possible. Go for the simplest way to um, get the result you want in these end games. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the. Um, illustrative games. Now, these are games from Keith's own um, game. Uh, these are positions from Keith's own games. And um, what I wanted to ask you now is what move did you play? Oh, can we go back, Sarah? Can we go back a few moves? Sure. Um, yeah, I will. We'll open up the actual study in a moment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just explaining. This was the ones that they, I, I asked them to play this ah. out. And okay. I was going to say it's a draw um, if you use the engine. And a lot of you children rely on engines, but Keith will be very, very confident in these positions that he could win um, because he knows all the ideas. And we're now going to go to the actual game and Keith's going to explain the game. Um, but before we do that, just tell me, what move did you try in this position for black? What was the first move that you um, tried for black? What's your idea here? I'll just give you, just tell us in the chat. Oh, the problem with rook c4 is um, black can is you're, you're you're kind of you're kind of burying the rook and it, it, it runs out of ideas. It can't you can't do much with the rook on c4. So if you played rook c4, then why to play actively um, with the a3 rook? So why if you play rook c4, why to go rook a7? And then if you attack the pawn, which must be the idea of rook c1, if you attack the pawn with the, by bringing the other rook to c8. The problem is white then plays yes yes these rooks are a three and suddenly 
those rooks are useless. They're not doing anything. They've been used up completely. The White King and the Rook A3 neutralised both of those rooks, and White's got a spare rook on A7 to do whatever he pleases with. So then suddenly White's certainly Rook B7, winning a pawn. And, you know, um, actually White's on top here. Black's in big trouble. So you can't just attack the C3. It's too easy for White to defend. So you have to play. You, you have to... I'll explain this later when we're looking at the game in a few minutes. But you can't just gang up on one weakness and hope to win. You have to try and create two weaknesses. This is often the secret to winning endgame. You create two weaknesses, and then you play around attacking both weaknesses and try and tie your opponent in knots. So this is so the solution is a move which helps to create a second weakness. So if we... Uh, yeah, it is, said Rook G8 in the, in the chat, so fantastic. And uh, let's just go back. In fact... Somebody said Rook G8. One of you guys said Rook G8. Katie did. Yeah, well done, Katie. That's fantastic. Well done, Katie. Brilliant fine. Brilliant fine. So... Like Keith said, he's trying to create another weakness because he knows that if he gangs up on the C pawn, it's not going to do anything because White can just defend. Um, so fantastic, Katie. If this is the move, and what I'm going to do if we, if we go back about five six moves to the if yeah, you let's start go to the game, end. then you can talk yeah. us through the game and, and move from the black side as well. Think, and, yeah, and, um, we're going to start from this point in the game because the opening's a bit a bit boring. <laughs> Sorry, Keith. <laughs> it is boring. I agree. But the opening was very boring. So so White's just gone kick, play King F one. Um, what, what my opponent was a very strong player, rated rated about twenty, I don't know, twenty two hundred, twenty three hundred, very strong player, and and he knows how he knows how to try and defend this position. He knows how to how to get a you know how to try and get a draw in this position. I mean, you know, objectively it's equal. Black, but I want to win. I'm the high rated player. I want to win the game. What's what's? Can anybody suggest a plan for Black here? A plan to begin to a, a plan to um, break up White's position. Any plan, I mean, I'm not saying there's only one plan. Has anybody got any ideas for a plan? Yeah, and, a, and a first move of that plan. Is those of you that tried to just put the engine on and say, oh, it's just a draw. Um, you have to think of plans. And Keith says in his book that he gradually increases the position by finding small gains as he goes along. So there's a few. Um, a few yeah, engines, engines aren't very useful in a lot of positions because they show what, what would happen if you played perfectly for both sides. But there's a lot of positions that humans are incapable of playing perfectly from both sides. So you know, so a lot of chess is about making making the situation difficult in practice for your opponents. Um, so and and, and uh, I'll tell you a little a little strategy here which black has got in this in these kinds of structures where black doesn't have a C pawn and white does have a C pawn. And this is this is an, this is called a minority attack. With a minority attack, you use a one pawn less to create a weakness. So you use the A and the B pawns against the A, B, and C pawns. You throw the A and B pawns at the board, and however white reacts, white will end up with a weak pawn. So you start with B5. If we put B5 on the board, this yes, is the game. B5. And now the idea of the idea of B5 is to to um follow up as soon as possible with the move b4 now if white responds to b4 by taking it black will, ha will have that um pawn defended of course black will have it defended by a rook let's say for example on b7 if white plays c3 takes b4 when black plays b4 black will take back with a piece or even a pawn but with, in this case it will be a rook and then the, and then the white d pawn is isolated that's a weakness that's a, it's it's a weakness because it can't be defended by other pawns and so, and so why would we have to defend it in a very awkward, clumsy way with pieces? That's called an isolated pawn. That's a weakness. So if b4 is responded to by c3 takes b4, then black succeeded in creating a weakness in white's position. If white is able to reply to b4 with the move c4, for example, if there's a rook on c1, again, by then when black plays d5 takes c4, there will be an isolated pawn on d4. So black would again have succeeded in weakening white's pawn structure um and if white responds to the move b4 by doing nothing then black will play b4 takes c3 and white will take back with the pawn on b2 and again white will have a weak pawn that pawn on c3 is called a backward pawn it can't be defended by another pawn and black will have a lot of fun attacking it with moves like rook c8 and then doubling rooks on the c file and um and black will gain will gain the attack on the queen side so this 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 is this minority attack. There's no real long-term defense against it. It's bound to create a weakness in white's position. 
So what White normally likes to, needs to try to do is, you know, in a middle game, for example, when Black's doing these kind of attacks, White would be we trying to attack on the king side in compensation. White would have, you know, queens and knights and things, and White would be playing, you know, knight e5 or knight to g5 and so on, playing for mate in the middle game. In the end game, White can't really do that. So therefore, Black is, in this position, Black is a little bit better. Black sounds a little bit better. Okay, great. So let's, um, let's see what happened in the game then. So I think White decided to go a3. Um, and yeah, then after... sensible to stop b4 for a while. Bishop. Now, bishop f6, the idea of bishop f6, this is quite a subtle move because um, often to win in chess, like I was saying before, you need to create two weaknesses in your opponent's position. If you just give them one weakness, they can put all their pieces there and defend it. So if they have just, let's say, for example, I'm able to play b4 and then b takes c3, white takes back, b, b2 takes c3. Now, if white, white can then defend that c3 with everything, with the bishop, with a king on d3, with two rooks, white can defend that form with four things. So black can't win the game by force just by playing against that one weakness. However, if you were able to give him another weakness, like say on the queen, on the king side somewhere, a weak pawn, which we'll see later as the game develops, if you can give him another weakness, then it's much more difficult to switch between defending two different weaknesses. This is one of the big principles of endgame play, give your opponent two weaknesses. So the idea of bishop f6 is to advance my kingside pawns, to play g5, to play h4. If I play those moves, then the white pawn on g2 will start to feel a little bit weak, a little bit like it's vulnerable, it can't be defended. It's, it's you know, if the white king's gone away to defend c3, then a black a black rook might get go to the second, go to um, white second rank and start pestering those pawns and they can't move so easily. If, Black's got the cramp on, got a pawn yeah, on G5, pawn on Ryan has just said that in the chat, um, G5 um, is the idea, and then you do... You yeah, to gain game. space on a king side. Yeah, exactly. yeah so, so we'll go on a few moves, and so yeah. Bishop F6, and White plays very sensibly, bring the kings to... You should play actively with the king um, in, in chess. You should play actively in the end game in chess. You should play... Um, don't, don't be afraid to move the king. King's got a nice home on D3 to defend everything. Um, and it, what's interesting here, if you play one more move, so I okay, carried on. Don't tell them what you played, you can get them to work this out. Black to play, what should black play here? Twin things, I can't remember what I played, so I'm trying to solve it as well. <laughs> Come on, Keith. I thought this was difficult. <laughs> and no, Harry, we're not attacking, it's the end game. Stop creating weaknesses. <laughs> By the way, black should never, ever, ever play e5 in this kind of position because you, you ruin everything. If you played e5, you ruin everything because you, instead of creating weaknesses in your opponent's position, after white replies d4 takes e5, black will be the player with weaknesses. Black will have a weak, a weak pawn on d5, which will always be weak. Yeah, I so, think she's just got a question. Okay. Um, do you want to ask your question, Nisha? You should be able to speak now. Hello? I don't have a question. Oh, you raised your hand. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, so um, here, um, black was trying to fix these weaknesses. Keith says he doesn't. I'm trying to play on both sides to give him weaknesses on both sides. Yeah, exactly. So um, he came up with, he doesn't even remember, he came up with H4. H4, <laughs> yeah. This, fixing, fixing the king side, yeah. That, but it is the move I'd play if I didn't remember. Because now look at these pawns, they can't really move forward. And I, he said, do not think about playing E5. We don't want to damage your pawn structure. Um, okay, so game continued. Just one, one little thing here, yeah, that's, that's fine, playing here. Yeah. Now, what's interesting here is that the mission, this moment, the white king is very well placed on d3, the black king is a little bit out of the game on g8. But by creating weaknesses, I'll, I'll, I'll refer you back later on to this position. By creating weaknesses, in the end, I can actually infiltrate with the black king through the, past those weaknesses. And in the end, the black king become, becomes really, really powerful in this game, and the white king gets driven right back. So I'll, re I'll remind you of this position and the king on g8 and the king on d3, and then we'll compare in about 20 moves time what's happened to the kings. So white wants to swap off the bishop. He wants to swap it off because it's on the same colour as a lot of the white pawns, so, so um, it hasn't got much mobility. So it's understandable he wants to swap off the bishop. So he, um, so I'll move the king to defend the bishop. Always, always go forward with the king in end games. Yeah. King g7. I want to take back with the king, not with the pawn, of course. So on with the game. Yeah, so I think your opponent was quick to swap on f6 as well, wasn't he? So Yeah, so now, if in, in this position, yeah, now I played e6. Now, if he um, plays rook a1 here, which would be a very nice move, because it's threatening. So if we play rook e to a1 here, it would be a nice move. But I, the problem is, is 
I play bishop takes um, e5, and that pawn becomes weak after d takes. I go rook a b8 to first of all to defend against against um, a takes b, and now I'm threatening rook c4 and then rook e4, and the e pawn's weak. I'm also threatening king g6 and king f5, and uh, two different ways of getting at that very weak pawn on e5. So why? White doesn't want to play with that weak pawn, so that's why White wants to get rid of the bishops first. That pawn was never forward. That's why I play rook c4, um, that's what Keith was saying, but you need to play rook b8 first because otherwise they'll take on b5. Yeah. And um, now that pawn, I can attack with the king and, and the rook, so it's a very weak pawn on e5. So um, he shouldn't, if he wants to use his rooks actively, he should top off the bishop first, which is what he does. Yeah, um, so let's just go back to game. So after e6, um, I think you write in the book here that white was too quick to just exchange the bishops off. Um, white... He should keep those bishops on, I think. He should play something like bishop d6 and just try and um, try and keep the bishop, stop me moving those pawns to, to beat, you know, a5 and b4. Bishop d6, it would be, be much more difficult to win this game. I mean, I'd try, but it would be more difficult. You so it's a little bit too quick. <laughs> it's, a very, it's, it's, a very, it's a very common thing for players to think that if they want to draw, they think just keep swapping off pieces and they're getting nearer to a draw. That's not always the case. Sometimes the best way to draw is to keep active, keep your best pieces on the board. Um, so, you know, this, this has helped me swapping off those bishops. It's helped me a little bit. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, because Keith's method in these end games is just grind away. So these small advantages, Keith was probably very, very happy to see bishop takes f6 on the board here. Um, yeah, yeah, it keeps the position nice and tidy for me. No, this is another important moment. Oh, it is a good point, yeah. No, there's two. Um, the black's got two moves here. Maybe we should ask the class. Yeah, that's got two moves. Rook, clearly, black's got two moves. The rook's attacked. Either black can play rook takes rook on a3, or black can sidestep. Which is the best move? Yeah, here? choose between those two moves. And Which of those two moves should black play? Tell me, uh, tell us in the chat. You can say to everyone, there are two options. Do you take on a3 or do you go rook b8? Um, there's 11 of you, so if you just vote. And if you've got it, if you've got a, if you can say why, that's even better. Okay, so we're not going to make any comments yet. So take your time. I want to. I want to hear an answer from everyone. Do we want to take on a three or do we want to go rook b eight? And as Keith said, um, if you tell us why, that'll be even better. waiting for a couple of people take your time so what have we got we've got one two three four five six yeah just waiting on a couple of people Don't know is a re don't know is also a reasonable answer. <laughs> Rook B3, maybe Rook C4. I don't know. Okay, I think we've had quite a lot of answers in there. So I didn't see anyone wanting to swap the rooks off, which is Excellent. quite impressive. That's quite very impressive. impressive. <laughs> That's very impressive because if Black swaps the rooks, then the problem is is that um, Black will end up being actually very passive with the other rook because um, White will take back the rook, of course, and then White will play um, Rook A5, and Black will just be stuck defending. Black will have to play Rook B8, and um, and 
Black won't be able to do anything. White will play B4 and Black will just, just have to shuffle around behind the pawn. Um, so the idea is to play, if you put the A rook to B8, which is the game, you're then free with the other to, to go on adventures. And this is, um, and, we, and in a moment we'll recognise the position that we that we began this um, this this um, exercise with, um, because after B4, I've now I've now got a, the, the rook on C8 is now free to go on an adventure. Now we've created we've succeeded in creating the weakness on C3. There's no point attacking that. The only the only use the only use use in attacking C3 would be if we've got four rooks. <laughs> you need four. You literally need four rooks because why can defend C3 with both rooks and a king? So even three rooks wouldn't be enough to break through. You need four rooks. You need a rook on C4, a rook on C6, a rook on C7, and a rook on C8. So it's, you cannot possibly gain anything by attacking that pawn. You need to create another weakness. And this is the reason for rook G8, which I think some of you, one of you solved, one of you found rook G8. Katie was the only one, actually. Um, well, well played, Katie. That's, 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 that's a good effort. Everyone else wanted to play rook C4, but you need to understand why that doesn't work, because white can just defend. Rooks need space. I need breathing space, and it's a bit clogged on C4. They rook G8. Now the idea is we've created the first weakness on C3, um, and now we need to create a second weakness. And the threat is to play G4. If you if you were able to play G4 here, then it wouldn't matter how White responded, you'll be able to give White weaknesses. If you were able to play G4, and what your opponent then took it off, you'd take back with a rook, and G2 would be very weak. If White didn't take, then you'd be able to take yourself, and after White recaptured. G2 takes H3, the rook would come to G2, and F2 and H3 would be very weak, very weak indeed. So really, it's not White should not allow Black to play G4. So White plays F3 to prevent G4. And now what this has done, this is the real reason for G8, is to, is to create weak squares on F4 and G3. Black can now have to start to try and invade with the king, go aggressively with the king towards the G4. Yeah, well, and, the um, and king F5, that was played in the game. Yeah, the idea is to, and, and now suddenly, and, and, and not only is there a route for the king in via f4 and g3, but equally importantly, later on as the game opens up, there's a very, very weak pawn on g2. So now the pro white's problem is that there's, there's two weaknesses, a weak pawn, backward pawn on c3, and a backward pawn on g2. That's becoming more awkward. Um, that gives white some very awkward problems to solve because white's thinking, do I where do I put the king? Do I put the king? To, do I use the king to defend the g pawn, or do I use the king to defend the c pawn? So White's thinking is that the rook's defending the c pawns, and nothing's defending the g pawn. Also, Black's threatening to play king f4 here, so therefore White makes the natural decision of king e3. As a lot of players have played, my player's a very strong player, and he played king e3. He's a very natural move. So now the rook's done its job on g8. He can't do anything more useful on g8. I'll never, ever be able to play g4. So now I come back again. I'm back to c8 again. Um, the reason for this is to tie down the, the white rooks. I don't want white rooks invading my position. I don't want them coming to seventh rank, making a nuisance of themselves. So this move is just to just to keep those rooks tied down to the defence of c3. My, my, my plan now, now that I've made the king move away, I've, now that I've scared the king into coming to e3, to block my king coming to f4, I can now cause more trouble by pressuring c3. So my, let's just play, pretend, I don't, do we have the option to play moves that weren't played in the game? Or, yeah, or, of course. Yeah. Okay, so let's say that um, white tries to defend that um, the, the pawn. So when us say white plays um, rook c1 here, okay. defend the pawn. Then I'll go rook, c, rook c4, run white waits. You don't want to move the king and let the king come to f4. So then white waits, yeah, and then black plays rook Rook A C eight. Now, um, somebody tell me what I'm threatening in this position. Anybody? Who's the first to spot what I'm threatening in this position? Quick. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well done, Theo. You were first. Yeah. So yeah, Rook takes B four. So the only way to stop Rook takes B four here is well, if you don't want to move the king because I go King F four, so you have to play Rook B three. And then, and then what do I do? What? What? What's the? What's the? What's the cunning move now? Yes, Rook A eight. Good. Good answer. Good, good on Aaron. And suddenly, it, moments ago, White's rooks were completely controlling the A file. And look what, because White had weaknesses to worry about. So look what's happened. Suddenly, my rooks have got really active. And now I'm, I'm going to go with rook A1. I'm going to bring the rook back out from C4, across to the A file, and, in, and down, to, down to the back rank. And I'm going to cause all sorts of trouble with my rooks, attacking the king, attacking the G pawn, doing, doing some checks, helping my king come to F, F4. This will become really really difficult i mean even even and i'm not going to say look, use engines i'm never going to say use engines but i think even engines would agree that black's doing very well here 
Yeah, I think so, um, there so, are small steps that he's done to create the pressure, and that's what you guys need to do. Don't rush these end games. Just take your time and slowly, you know, ruin your opponent's position. But you can't go in and think I'm going to win it really quickly. I mean, there was one time I think I agreed to go for dinner with Keith, and oh gosh, this game went on for seven and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> that's average. Uh, but he won, so that's all. He, Keith's playing to win, and he's he's prepared to wait and take his time, and that's what he does, and that's what he does really, really well. Uh, the key is as well. People sometimes think that you're. I mean, sometimes I've people I've I've said it, I've seen it written that oh, Arkell just moves around and waits for a blunder. That is absolutely not what's going on. What are you doing? Normally, when you're manoeuvring, you're you're making you're playing for very small games. You're making you're, you're you've always got a plan. You, you've there's no there's not a, and I'm not, I'm not going to compare myself to these players, but the great grinders, the Magnus Carlsons and the Cap Capablancas and Karpov, these guys they don't do nothing waiting for their opponents to blunder. They're making very very small gains all the time. They're targeting weaknesses. They're creating weaknesses to play against. They're making the situation more and more difficult for their opponents. So anyway, so this is so this is what happens if he. <laughs> Quick point, um, because we had a very good question from Brian. What should I have done? And in, in Keith's book, actually, he talks about this. And when I was playing this position out, um, I I played it against um the computer, and the engine made a better move than Keith's opponent. And in this position, I think the best move for White is actually Rook A7. Yeah, White should play actively. White should White must play actively here. And then I would, and I've got a choice between F6 or Rook F8. Let's say Rook, let's say Rook F8. Keep everything solid. Yeah. And now, and now, this, again, this is, this is a human game. I mean, you know, you can't have the computer on every move. And now, again, you, you, you've, you've succeeded in playing Rook A7, which was the best move. But now, again, as a human, you've got to decide, what do I do? Do I stop King F4? Or do I play actively? And that's a difficult decision to, to make. I mean, a lot of people play King E3 here, and then perhaps I can consider Rook um, Rook F8, and then, sorry, Rook C8, and then White's well, got to decide how to defend the C pawn. So, um, you know, it's it, it's not 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 easy decisions to make for White. Um, perhaps last perhaps instead of Rook F8 against Rook A7, perhaps I'll play F6. But yeah, Rook A7 was the best move, and you know, and again with perfect play, you will draw this. But you need to play. You need to. But no one is perfect play, and this is the point Keith's trying to make. Like Keith wins so so many end games because you know he he doesn't mind that like, when his opponent makes a good move, he doesn't think. Oh no, I'm not going to win this. He's not thinking I've got to win. I'm playing a lower rated opponent. He just keeps. Trying ideas and plans, and eventually wears his opponent down. <laughs> yeah, or even equal strength players. If the position is more awkward for White, then the players are equal. Let's say both players are 1800, say. Both players are 1800, and one player's got more difficult problems to solve than the other. Then the player who's got the more difficult problems to solve will, will get a minus score. So it's kind of this position is this position is harder for White to play. White has to be very accurate to hold this. And yes, White's. If here White succeeds in finding Rook A7, which is the best move, and then Black plays F6. Again, White's got to keep on play, playing good moves because Black's got a very easy plan of King F4, King G3, and doubling up on the C line. It's very easy for Black to play, to, to play against those weaknesses on G2 and C3. So, um, but yeah. yeah. So if he finds Rook A7 and another 15 best moves, then he'll get his draw. So anyway, so, so gradually, so he decides, in this position, he decides... If he waits passively, as I just explained, if he just defends C3 passively, I'll eventually win the A file and I'll invade his position. So he understood that. So he decided he has to play something active. So he played F4. And so I played G4 because I don't want the position to open up for his rooks. And now I'm threatening G takes H3 followed by rook G8. So he takes. And now I'm threatening King G3, invading his position. So rook F3 to stop. And I'm sure at this point Keith was thinking, right, I've made good progress, and he was probably extremely confident he was going to win now. Um, I think it's near to winning now. But um, there was interesting; those rooks that which were so beautiful on the A file have now got completely separated from each other. The reason why? Because they had to deal with the weakness on C3 and the weakness on G2. And my king's gradually improved. The black, the white king's not sure where it should be. Does it stay around? Does it stay on D3 to defend the C pawn, or does it go around to F2 to defend the G pawn? White king is not really sure where it wants to be. So, and now that the rooks have been separated, <coughs> it's very easy for me to 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 to, um, to nudge the white rook off the A file. So my next plan is to win the A file and then to en enter white's position with with um, the remaining rook. So I now double rooks. To I now double rooks to challenge the A3 rook. The A3 rook can't do anything active because C3 was on pre, so now I've won the A file. 
Oh no, yeah. If we if we instead of playing F five, F five is a good is worked the last practical chance. Can anybody can anybody explain what happens here if White just waits? He can't move the rook. He can't make any pawn moves. Um, if he plays g3, I go rook a2 check and that wins the g3 pawn. So he, he, must, he must move the king. So let's say he goes to, um, uh, let's say he goes to e2. Right, can anybody find um, the next two black moves after king e2? The first one is, you know, like quite an obvious one. The second one is more subtle. So if we play king e2 for white here, uh, black to play and win, black to play and win by four. Yeah, rook a2, correct. Well done, well done, the H. But yeah, rook A2 check. And then that, that threatens a G pawn. So White must play um, King F1. Can we, can we make this move on the board or is it a bit messy? I can, I was just trying to get them to think in their heads. <laughs> okay, good, yeah, good plan, yeah. yeah. And now, what, what's the move now? And, what's, and why is it a good move? Yeah, we've got Ryan and Cameron that... Um, said in advance of rook c2. Correct. Okay, now what, this, there's a name for this situation. Does anybody know what the name is for this situation? At the moment, what I would have liked to have played last move was instead of rook c2, I would have liked to have gone rook e2. The reason I would have liked to have gone rook e2 is because then I will be following up with rook e4 and and the f4 pawn will be on a will be indefensible. I'll win a pawn, but I, I can't go rookie two because the king's on f1. There's a word to describe the situation. It was Does the last to say Zugzwang. <laughs> yeah, Zugzwang. The white is now in Zugzwang, and this is very typical. What happens as you get more and more active, and your pawn gets more and more passive. There's no pawn move here. Clearly, all pawn moves simply lose at least a pawn. Um, if the rook moves, it um, then um, the f pawn will be will be will be will be lost. Um, or if rook f2, I take the rook off and then win a king and pawn ending with king takes follow up with king takes f4. So clearly the rook can't move. If the king, the king's only got two moves. If the king goes to e1, then the g pawn drops and my h pawn queens. If the king goes to e1, to sorry to g1, then we've allowed that's allowing my rook e2 move. And I'm going to go rook e2, then rook e4, and that wins a pawn by force. So white is white's in Zug strong. White's white is, white is losing this position because he has to make a move. If he did, if he if he could pass and just say, okay, not moving, then it would be much more difficult to win. I mean, I, I, I have an advantage, but to actually force a win would be very difficult. Perhaps I would play something like King F5 and then King E4 and then maybe Rook D2 and then look at Rook, e, Rook D3 and see whether the King and Pawn was winning. You know, I'd have different ways to try and make progress. But it, but because it's in Zuck's run, it's actually a lot easier. So my opponent saw this. He saw he cannot play passively anymore, so therefore he plays f5 in desperation. Yeah, just to try and change the position. F5 here. And you'll notice that although I've now won a pawn, so we will take it off. Although I've, I've now won a pawn, have you noticed suddenly all my five pawns are weak? Suddenly, from having a beautiful structure of f7, e6, d5, suddenly the, all five of them are outside your pawns. So now I have to act quick. I have to act quickly. If I give White time to play rook e5 and then just to start taking off my pawns, then I won't be able to win the game. I must act very quickly. So I must play um, against the White King. And what should Black play? Let's let them decide. What should Black play here? See if you What's can the most active <laughs> play actively. I can't actually remember which one or which move I've played again. It's another one of those cases of not remembering, but there's two equally good moves, actually. Okay, well, we've had a couple of different moves in the chat. Um, we've had Rook A2, we've had F6. They're both, I mean, they're the two, they're the two moves. I think they're equally good. I don't know which one of them I played, actually. <laughs> I never know whether he's <laughs> winding me up when he says that. You went Rook A2. Okay, and yeah, we improve, improve the Rook first. Why not? Force the King to the back round. And then f6. You don't want the rook coming to e5 just yet. Prophylactic thinking, stopping what your opponent's trying to do. Because, I mean, if that f6 pawn drops, it's not the end of the world. But if you start losing, you know, this pawn, this pawn, then you're giving your opponent past pawns. And it's now, if white does nothing here, again, we'll, 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 I'll be able to make easy prey. If white has to king the f6, if white just waits, let's say he tries to just wait with rook f3, then I'll go, I'll go f4, and then rook, and then rook, then, then I'll go rook. D2. What am I waiting with, sorry, Keith? 
if white just does nothing, let's say rook f3, for example. Okay. Then I'll go f4. Yeah. And then rook d3 is the only the only reasonable waiting move. Um, and then rook c2. And then whatever, and then I'll and then I'll infiltrate with the rook. If the king goes to g1, I'll go rook e2 to e3. Ah, nice. And rook e3 next move, and that wins very easily. Or if 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 the king goes, if um, sorry, if the rook goes to, um, if we go back one move, and instead of rook, yeah, it, yeah, after, after rook d3, rook c2, it's another zog swing actually. If the rook goes back to f3, then I go rook um, d2, d2 for black. And now again, again, the rook, now the white rook can't move, and and if king e1, rook takes g2. So king g1 is the only move, and then I go rook e2, and then rook e3 again, and I'm on the rook away, because king and pawns are all, always winning for black. It's these small so, little things that just make it winning, isn't it, Keith? Yeah, so it's also, it, it's a moment, the moment that white starts playing passively, I can keep on improving, keep on improving, until I win by force. He understands that, so therefore he plays as actively as possible. So if we... Um, yeah, so if we go back to the game, he played. He understands he can't just sit there passively because I'll just come and round, come and come and um, time in knots. So he goes instead. Um, yeah, let's just go back to the game. Um, goes rookie after f6. He goes rookie e6. So no, no, again, give him time, and he'll take off all my. He's not taking my pawns. He's taking. He's attacking one of my f pawns. He's trying to go rook d six or rook b six, and if he can start swapping off pawns, then he can even end up a pawn down but have a dead drawn position. So again, I need to act quick. I need to, and and the, the secret to win this now is to combine threats with queening a pawn with threats of mate. Um. So um. The next move is. Does anybody know what 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 black plays now, in order to make progress? Um. Ryan has said king g three. King G three is 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 is, is kind of a, a nice idea. It's a, but unfortunately, Rook E three check just drives me back again. You have to King G three, Rook E three check. Then the only way I can go forwards is King H two, and then I go and stumble into a mate after Rook H three mate. So I will end up losing. I end up losing if I keep trying to go forwards. How so, yeah, Rook, Leo have found Rook C two? Rook C two. The problem, I mean, Rook C two is playable. I mean, did I play it? Him? I don't I know. I mean, you playable. Did. I think you did. I did okay. Yeah, rook c two first. Okay, rook, there's two ways to win. Actually, rook c two is one of the one of the ways to win. Um, and and so h three has been suggested as well. Yeah, I, I think h three also wins. The idea being that after takes, so I can threaten mate with king f three, and my king is very very good. But we'll we'll come to that idea in a minute. So rook c two first, and so he takes my pawn. Okay, now this is this is an important moment in the game. So again, give him time to start taking my pawns and he'll get a draw. I need to act very, very quick here. I need to play against his king. I need to get one of my pawns near to queening. I need to distract him. I need to distract him from taking my pawn from, from my pawns off the board. So find a move that distracts him. Very good, excellent, mm -hmm. good work, Cameron. Brilliant move, because you're you're fighting. You want to put the king to that beautiful f3 square. So now you're threatening h2 here. Which is the game. So he must take. And I don't take back. That's you want the king. You want to use the king aggressively. Taking back, he's just wrong. <laughs> yeah, you, this is king f3, and now and now you're threatening. Now you're threatening mate. So so your 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 idea is to is to combine threats of mate with um. With with threats against his 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 own pawns, but, but yeah, exactly. Why can't play rook f six check because the pawn's in the way and keeps threatening mate, and then he's going to defend the pawn and you know he's winning. So this is an incredibly now, good. Move. If I can take his d pawn while defending my own d pawn, then that will be excellent. That will be like really good progress. So um, now the game is king g one. Well, my next question is what happens after king e one? How do I how do I win his d pawn and keep my d pawn? And keep and keep his king as bad as possible. Yeah. Well played, King. Well played. Well, King E4 is a good move. King E3 is an even better move. 
because King E3 keeps his king boxed in as much as possible. And now you're threatening mates on the back rank. And then when he defends against the mate, you get to play king takes, king takes d4. And, and, and he's running out of pawns. I mean, you know, I've still got three. His other pawns are very weak, and, and that'll be a winning position for black. So he, 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 he didn't want to play king e1 because of king e3. So he went the other way. And now there's a nice little, little combination of moves here. This is, this is probably the hardest test I'm going to set you because it's a sequence of moves, it's not just one move. And um, if you don't get this sequence, don't worry, because I've, I've set this, this position to, to players to play 210, and they haven't been able to solve it. Yeah, it's so this, this next sequence. And after this, uh, we'll take a break, and then you're going to play some training games against each other from Rockhand Games. So um, this is the final bit of calculating before you play. And then we'll just, show you the, we'll just show you how to finish after that. So this is, you, you know, what you, so your idea is you want to, uh, as, from an aggressive a position as possible with your king, you want to get to a position where you're, not your defend, not only just defending the deep pawn, you're capturing his deep pawn, and hope for them soon afterwards the B pawn. So you're trying to just win his pawn by combining with threats against his king. But this is this is very very difficult this sequence. What 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 I will allow is you, you if you can't see the whole sequence to do it move by move. So if you can find moves that improve Black's position, then you're solving it accidentally if you like, which is sometimes a way to solve these things. Don't try to see the whole combination because it is very very difficult. But if you can improve the position move by move, that's a good start. So at the moment my rook's on c3. Where would I where would that rook be slightly better? If everything all else been equal, what would be a slightly better square for that rook? I mean, if I, if I could have it already attacking the deep one, that would be great, because then I would take off the deep one. So that's but failing that, where would be very slightly better than c3? Where do rooks belong apart from behind past pawns? Yeah. Yeah, good. Shall I? Yeah, well, 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 well done, Ryan. Yeah. See, the rook would just slightly rather be on c2, but you don't want to, if you go there now, you, what just takes the pawn off. So you want to do it with a tempo. So to get to c2 with a tempo, what do you do? You go rook c1, check. King must go to h2, and then you go back to c2. And king g1, king h1 is much worse. And now you've, you've simply improved the rook. And now the next trick is you need to combine threats of mate against his pawn. Now, you see, this is quite a clever one. So this is, I don't know, can anybody find my move? I mean, this is a very difficult one, rather. Okay, the problem with King G3 is he'll just check me away again. He'll go Rook check and he'll bring his Rook back again and attack one of my pawns. He'll go Rook King G3, Rook G6 check and that stops the most. Well, um, so what's, so it's black to play, so um, yeah, we have, yes, rook G, yes, rook G, rook G2 check is correct. Yeah, because if I go rook G2 now, he just takes my pawn and I've got no mate. So the idea of rook G2 check is, is if he plays king F1, rook back, then rook D2, then rook D2 threatens his pawn and threatens his mate. So I get to take the pawn and follow, I get to win the pawns one by one. So now he has to defend with, to deal with the mate. So king the corner is the only way to stop rook D2 and winning the pawn. But now what's now what's the move? Again, it's based on the bad, this terrible state of white king. King f2 is a little bit interesting. King f2. I'm not sure after king f2, white can't play rook takes d5. Now I've not got. I don't have a mating threat. I have a perpetual, but not a mate. So I need to. Ah, oh, thanks to Rook D2. Theo, good work, Theo. It was Ed Jackson first, actually. <laughs> sorry, say again? Ed Jackson wrote the um, correct answer first. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> takes sorry. Five king G3. We'll play both of you. Yeah, this is this is the cunning the cunning way to finish this off. And it's, it's, and it, it's not so cunning. It's very normal because it's what happens when you've got an active king. So Rook D2. And now the point is, is that, yeah, if King, if, if King, if Rook takes four, this is the last, this is the last important moment. So we put a King back on H1 for a minute, very important variation coming up. If Rook takes D5, which is the only way to save the position, then what's the move for Black, anybody? Who's first? I think Ed's already written it in the chat. Ed? Ed, Ed wrote it before. Um, oh, well done, Ed, yeah, King G3. And, and White can't stop mate, it's a mating attack. And you look at, look, do you remember really early on in this, in this um, game, when I said how, when I, showed how active white's king was on g3 and how passive black's king was on g8. You now look at now look at the king. This is all coming back because of the weak white pawns. It's all coming back because of the weak g2 pawn and the weak c3 pawn. 
certainly the White Kings absolutely finished. So uh, we'll just play the last few moves. So uh, so um, rook takes d5 wasn't possible. Um, so I played rook d2. If we just go back about two moves. Mm. <laughs> okay, go back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. So, I played, so after, after rook g2 to king h1, rook d2. Um, yeah, so so he put after rook d2, he couldn't take the pawn, so he went rook um, f5 instead. So I went king g3, threatening mate. I might as well come and take his h pawn off him. Yeah, now I'm threatening right. mate, and I'm, now I'm threatening mate, and I'm threatening the d pawn, so he can't Maybe not give me quite. all his pawn, so he has to check again. And now, again, with both threats, so he has to check again. And now he checks that one, and now I'll take that one. And now the final twist, and this is why he resigned again, is because I'm now threatening the b pawn and going to go three pawns up. If he takes Rook takes b5, he resigned, but if he plays rook takes b5, what would what's the final move? Winning yeah. move. King g3. Yeah, well done, Theo. Well done, Theo. And again, the white rook smothered on b5. No defense against. Actually, somebody said something funny here. Somebody said actually better than King G3. I showed this game to somebody a few weeks ago, and they said better than King G3 is King F2. <laughs> 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 because because, it, because you can't stop rook h4, mate. But as whereas against King G3, you can actually push. Brain mate for one move, rook takes d5. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I, I never ever heard of it until somebody pointed that out. Oh, that's so, that's it. That's game a over. fantastic game piece. Um, so I want them to have a bit of a break now before we get back. I'm just going to put the pairings for our um, tournament. Um, we're going to play four versus three training game. So I've put the pairings in the chat. And this is the position you're going to be playing out after the break. Don't start your games now, but if you can just... Um, have a look at that position and think about um, how to play it with white and black. Um, you're going to be playing it out and then keeps going to go through the games and just show some important points. So this is the starting position and it's going to be black to play. So if you know how to do this um, on the trainer and challenge each other, then um, just try and um, do it now. Otherwise, we'll help you after the break. But do make sure you take a short break um, because obviously you've been focusing really hard for an hour. Um, so if you come back at quarter past, that would be fantastic. Quarter past, so that's 12 minutes because we did run over. And then you're going to be playing this against the person that I've put in the chat. But it'd be really, um, really useful if you could, um, yeah, work out who your opponent's username on Leech and just log in. Um, sorry, I missed the U out on your name there, Theo. But, um, okay, uh, not paired you, Cameron. Okay, yeah, I'll get that sorted out now then. Um, Alex did the pairings. We'll sort that out. Um, just give me a moment. Um, you'll be paired. So is anyone else not paired? Okay, you might end up playing Keith. <laughs> um, okay, I'll, I'll I'm spare. I need an opponent. Yeah, I'm spare as well. So don't worry, you, you'll get a game. Um, so after the break, um, we'll do that. There's 12 of us in the meeting. So I, yeah, I'm confused. Who's, one, two, three, four. Oh, maybe... Yeah, I'll sort it out anyway. That's absolutely fine. Um, so we'll see you. Um, if you just um, ask in the chat, if you don't know the person and what their username is, um, Adams is... Um, yeah, if you don't know, just ask in the chat and we'll get it sorted out. Okay, yeah, if you could just tell each other what your usernames are um, and that would be fantastic. Okay, so have a break. Make sure you do go out, maybe get a bit of fresh air um, and then we'll see you back here at quarter past to do the games. Don't start the games yet though, please, because we want to... Um, you know, go through them and what time limits and all that kind of thing. Uh, thank you. See you shortly. Right, welcome back everyone. I um, hope you had a nice break. Um, I've shared this study in the chat. So if you click on the study and you click um, here and then continue from here, play with friend and then challenge the person that we've put you're playing in the chat. Now, sorry, Cameron, you're playing against Sophie. Um, I forgot to put that pairing in the chat. So you put play with friend. Um, you need to play one with white and one with black. Um, I only want you to play 5-2 um, because Keith's going to go through exactly um, how to play it afterwards and we've, we've only got an hour. So play one with white and one with black in 5-2. And if you could write your usernames in the chat, that would be handy because then I can um, look get the games all up on my shared screen. So if you could, or maybe write, uh, put a link to your game um, in the chat, that would be helpful, although I will endeavour to find them. So for anyone that just got back, um, you should know who you're playing by now. Hopefully you've managed to share your usernames with who you've been paired against. And all you need to do is um, click here, go to the position seven 
and then you need to click play um, versus continue from here, play with a friend and type in their username. And you need to be playing one with white and one with black, five, two time control. And when you finish the first, you can just um, press rematch. If you want to mute um, the Zoom whilst you're thinking, that's absolutely fine because I will be um, probably talking a bit to Keith. And if you want to really focus, then that's no problem. But remember to um, make sure it's off mute when we talk about the positions because Keith's going to tell us how black should play this position, how white should play this position. And it needs to be black to play when you do the challenge. So you can start when you're ready. Yeah, no problem at all. And um, it'd be very helpful for me if you put your game link in the chat, if you know how to do that. If not, don't worry. Um, so if anyone's got any problems, just ask me and I'll help you. Thanks, Aaron, um, for his game link. So I'll open that on my screen. I've got one game underway, Keith. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it's on the screen now. Keith's not going to make any comments yet, um, yeah. but he'll do it at the end. So other Can I, there's some, at the moment, um, there's a poll blocking my screen about <laughs> about speckled head. <laughs> do I need to? Can I get rid of that? Yeah, get rid of it. Keith's not not not. Okay. Uh, okay. okay I'll <laughs> um, so I'm just going. Yeah, get rid of that. That's fine. I'm just going fine. to um, try and open up all the games um, on the screen. Like I say, just mute mute the. Um, mute so you can concentrate on your games if you want to. That's not a problem. But thanks everyone that's put the links in the chat. I really appreciate that. So I'll start opening them all as tabs. And if you're having a problem, you don't know who you're playing, you don't know how to do it, then just ask. I'm, I'm here to help. How do you play with black? When you do the challenge, um, it asks you which colour you want to be. And um, there's like white. So should, I play, should, I play, uh, should I play white at some point against someone to show how you try to win? Yeah, you can do. So what I'll do is let's just check all the games are on, underway and then we'll take a volunteer to play you afterwards. That's absolutely fine. Um, let me just show them how to do, um, how to play for that. Training position, continue from here, play with a friend and then you click black there. You click on the black king, right? Cameron's raised his hand. So let me just unmute. Uh, Ryan, I think Kushan needs to know your username. So could you just share your username in the chat, please? Um, and... Cameron, yeah, I've, I've unmuted you. Would you like to ask? Um, because I'm on an iPad, You're on an iPad. I'm going to move on to my computer and look as a different person. Okay, yeah, that's no problem at all. Do I need to do this as well, Sarah? Do I need to log in as well? Just watching for now. Um, <laughs> keep, keep, keeps like, ah, oh, I just want to play the same game out. <laughs> so like, oh, why am I not? Well, I guess. I mean, I guess I can just tell you the. I don't know. Can I just tell you the move? Yeah, you, yeah, we will do that. That's fine. So um, <laughs> no, children, no, no, games are underway. So we've got three games underway that I can see at the moment. I'm trying to wait for all five to be started, and then we can focus on just watching the games, Keith. Um, and Thank then after they've all finished, they're playing one with black, one with white. We can go through them and um, make some comments. So Fitzipiero against Wolfhide hasn't started yet. But I think that's due to start shortly. Um, yeah, it has. Um, so I'm just waiting on, uh, I think, Cameron against Sophie. But I think... You know, what is the Zoom meeting? What's the Zoom meeting ID? Okay, um, let me sort that one out. Um, I think when I share my screen, it just goes away. So let me just find that now. Hang on. Stop sharing. So I'll keep um, this game on the screen. Keith can have a look and think what he's going to be saying in the post mortem. Um, Actually, yeah. At the moment, I can't. At the moment, I've got you. You, I've got you in full. Sorry, I have on the my screen again. Um, and I think Harry has a question, so I'll just let him unmute himself for a second because I think he might. Okay. I haven't seen Harry's game actually yet, so let's do this. Um, mm -hmm. Right, Harry, I hope this is a useful question. <laughs> uh, I'll trust that it is. Go on then, Harry, what's the question? Um, I can't find that the study, like... You're like really literate on the computer. Right, here we go, let me put the link in. No, I can find the study, but I can't find that page where we get the game from. Right, so... Yeah. Um... Oh no, he's challenged me. Okay, brilliant, okay. Oh, well, it isn't supposed to be 10 plus five, or is it? Five, two, please. Okay. Send me the link when you start the game. That'd be fantastic. Thank you. And I can have all the games on the screen for Keith to have a look at. I give his expert 
analysis. Right, um, I'm going to mute you now, Harry. Right, so we're just waiting on two games to get started. And well done if you've managed to get your games underway. Um, can you see my screen, Keith? I can see um, a position where black, where Black's got a, an, an H-pawn and an F-pawn. Cool, yeah, okay. So we've got Queen eating Dragon against um, Women's Cause yeah. Theo. It's Theo, uh, Queen eating Dragon, um, uh, um, Aaron against Theo. So Queen eating Dragon. As if I've played these players, Somewhere other recently. Did you guys play my simul? They probably did, yeah. Clue what it was. They're, they're, they're just mad. They're, everyone here is improving lots, so I'm sure they do. Um, awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, that's that game. And then I'll show you the other couple of games. We're just waiting for two more to get underway. So when those other two games are underway, if you post a link, um, right, Cameron's just going back into the meeting, so he had to switch from the iPad to. Uh, and hopefully, we'll have. Harry, is your game underway? If it is, can you post a link in the chat, please? Oh, it isn't. Okay. We'll get it sorted out in a minute. I'll just remind you how to do it if you are not sure. I'll put the study link in the chat. So if you click on the study link and then you go to the five versus four position and then you put play versus friend. Okay, all right, here we have uh, five, two, please, Florian. Oh, this one's interesting. It is. All right, I think Cameron's still having a few issues. I'm just gonna unmute. Yeah, Cameron, you okay? I like that white has got the pawn to H5. I'm pressing the study link. Brilliant. Okay, fantastic, Cameron. And then it should it should work. Just go onto the study link and then um, go down to um the, oh, I'll put it on my screen because it's not open anymore. Go down to four versus three training and click here, continue from here, play with a friend, and then challenge Sophie, and you'll be all set. And then if possible, please just put the link to your game in the chat so Keith can go through all the games afterwards. Right, um, Keith was looking at this position, said it looked interesting. Was it that one you? Well, they're all interesting. I don't know. They're all interesting. Yeah, they're all interesting. Keith gets so one. excited about rook end games. <laughs> what's, what's Sophie's um, username? Um, Sophie, can you just remind us what your username is, if that's okay, please? Thanks, Sophie. She's just going to write it in the chat. I don't think that Keith's not good at tactics just because he's an end game expert. Keith's, Keith's tactics are amazing as well. Um, he's a great attacking player as well. It's just he loves end games, so he prefers to navigate towards an end game. And the good thing about that is that end games are quite risk free, whereas if you have a really aggressive attacking game and something goes wrong, you'll end up losing. So I think Keith prefers. Yeah. If, if you play a lot like I do, then. You don't want to have lots and lots of complicated middle games. If you play a lot like I do, you just want to, you just want to have you you want to have a lot of nice, easy to play technical, technical games. Actually, who's trying to win this? I think Black's making good progress here. <laughs> yeah, when White's short on time. I mean, in an ideal world, you would have had a lot longer on the clock, but um, just because we've got to get through. Um, games. I mean, yeah. if you're enjoying this and you want to, you know, play against your opponent after the lesson, then please do. I mean, it's, it's a great position to play out. And once Keith's given his expert analysis on um, how to play these positions, you might you might challenge a friend, and that's that's the point of these classes. You might you might do it. So I'd love you to do that. Sophie's. You know what? Using... Sorry, what's the problem, Cameron? Sophie's username is in valid. It says I typed in. Okay, right. Is it a capital Z? Let's have a look. Um, Lee Chess. Um, Zooks. Wang. He, she wrote the wrong thing. It's uh, Zook. Yeah. That one? She, she wrote the wrong, wrong thing to. 
She she gave me the right one. Now. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so is that all sorted? Put the, post the link when the game started, and then we'll be all set. Oh, wow. Harry managed to join with Jet. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny. Um, okay, do a rematch then. Um, oops, Florian. Yeah, so um, King G4. Probably not the best move. <laughs> that's an unusual final position. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, do the rematch. And um, yeah, rematch um, them, and then we'll go through the games when they're finished. Okay, let me just check what tabs I've got open. So I'll close that one down. Close this one down. Okay, let's um, see how the games are going. And Keith's not going to, he's probably sat there thinking, I want to say that, I want to say that, but he's not going to make any comments. No, on the game quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I say, you haven't been given a huge amount of time, but if you fancy continuing this um with your training partner after the class then i'd really encourage you to do that yeah unfortunately black ran out of time there but it looks like white's made really really good progress um with the idea of e5 coming next i think the rook's gone isn't it i mean white's going to go e, e takes f5 and then the rook's trapped oh actually even better i was just thinking oh, that, that, yeah. that g4 square has been fatal in these in these games one player got their king checkmated <laughs> on g4 and the got getting their rook checkmated on g4 Sophie, it's black to play. Yeah, black to play. Yeah, don't worry, it'll be sorted out in a minute. Don't worry. Um, so this is an interesting position. That is, yeah, we'll keep on that. I mean, QED's um, very short on time. But having said that, QED does play ultra bullet, so I don't think it's going to bother him. <laughs> <laughs> All of these will beat me at ultra bullet. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Cameron, for the link. So I've got one more open. So everyone's underway now. So well done, guys, because it's always hard to get set up when we're doing it on Zoom. Okay, let's watch the end of this game then, Keith, and then we can can move on. Offering mm -hmm. draws. Why are you offering draws? Keith will never offer draws until the game's a draw. <laughs> <laughs> Don't offer draws, Theo. <laughs> you got to play it out. Keith's opponents get very frustrated because he just keeps going and going and going. My opponents offer draws. I don't offer draws. No, I don't offer draws either. I think children shouldn't... shouldn't you should play, play, learn, play and learn. Yeah, definitely. That's an interesting one. How's this one going? That one finished with a loss on time. Um, ah, it's a black one, that one. Uh, here, yeah, we had that position where white um, managed to trap black's rook. Here... What's going on? Uh, oh, this is very interesting. That was the checkmate one, wasn't it? I need to get the new games open, but there's still a couple of these still going on. Um, this, let's follow the end of this then, Keith. But I think. Mm. I think the Queen Eating Dragon looks close to victory. Mm -hmm. I've lost some little traps. Yeah. Little trap, a little stalemate trap. I drew, and, and I drew Dave Ledger once this ending because he just allowed a stalemate. Mm. Oops, I thought I'm going to save the game. Well done, Queen Eating Dragon. Okay, good, good game, both of you. Um, Because that was the first game to start and the last to finish, so that, that's good. Okay, so Theo, you now... Do a rematch um, where you're white. And if you, yeah, and if you could just um, put the links in the chat, that would be amazing. And then I don't have to go into a profile and find the games. I want to keep them all open in tabs so that Keith can go through them. Thanks, Aaron. Okay, so they're on their second game's underway this time. Theo is playing white and Aaron is playing black. Impressed by the players who are playing G4. Says in my book that G4 with white and G5 with black are my two favourite. In whatever move, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Um, oh, thank you, if you uh, Adam, for putting your new link in. That's really helpful. Um, so this time, Adam is playing black, trying to defend. 
had him trapped as a penalty to rook in the last game. Um, Harry, do you want to put your new link in? Anyone else that's underway with game two, if you could give me the links, that would be really helpful. Thank you. So these are the old games. They're all finished. So got a lot to go through, Keith. This is going to be good fun. Mm. Yeah. This one was a draw. Which, as I'm sure Keith will tell you, that is the result that should be happening. <laughs> be a draw, but... With best play. I think, actually, I think it's quite a big margin. I think it's quite a big draw margin at first. I think I think it's one of those things where you can you're trying to just make progress. You're just trying to make the position slightly more difficult in practice. But there's a you've got to do a lot before you actually theoretically lost. Yeah, thanks, Cameron. I think I've got the game open yet. This one. That's their game one. Oh, interesting. That's an interesting position. What happened there? <laughs> Oh, they're playing. They're still playing. They're still playing because they were a bit late getting started. That's their game one. Yeah, this is very interesting. Yeah, the easiest way to play your game two is just to press, press rematch and then it will reverse the colours automatically, I think. I might be wrong. <laughs> this is really... I'm fascinated by this one. That's interesting, isn't it? The king is hmm. very stuck, but then again, we can't immediately get a checkmate because of no. on H4, so... Mm. This is incredible. Maybe it's a win. Oh, I see. We better not say the moves, but I see what you're saying. And I think. Mm. I think White knows why. Okay, Wolf Hyde, you might need to, ca uh, to challenge Kushal because I think it's not letting him play you. Oh, brilliant move. Yeah, I that's what I was going to say. I think he was going to go Rook H1, but I didn't want to give it away. Um, um, Ryan, if you, um, when you challenge, um, you can select the colour. So let me just show you that, even though I know me and Keith are hooked on this game. If you go continue from here, play with a friend, you can pick which colour here. So you can just click the right colour, white, black. That makes sense. So just click the um, the king of the color you want to play, and then it will work. Ryan wants to unmute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, that's fine. Um, where is it? Do, 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 do. Can't. Yeah. There you go, Ryan. You can um, you can talk now. Yeah. Um, I tried starting with white, but then white goes first, and you said black needs to go first. So he needs to challenge me with black, but for some reason he can't. Okay, so um, let's just um, go back to this because you just, yeah, I think it said because you're not friends and uh, I mean, you could make friends on Lee Chess. <laughs> you don't know how to do that. But um, I think if you, um, so we've got the position, where's my link? I've got so many tabs open. Um, okay, so that's that's the position and then when, um, it's black to play, so make sure it says black to play and then just go continue from here, play with a friend and then pick which colour because it's already set as black to play on the study. So what colour do you need to be this time, Ryan? Oh yeah, I just need to edit the board so, to, so it's black to play. Okay, yeah, that would be great and then it should be working. Okay, thank you. It can be a bit fiddly, but it'd be great if you can get it working. Okay, uh, which game should we look at, Keith? <laughs> They're all looking exciting. You choose. Uh, you, are, we, are they? Are there some going on still? Yeah, so they're on game two at the moment. Um, so these are the game ones. I haven't got the link to Harry's game two. Um, so let's close that one now. So I've got um, uh, that one, Black Resigned. Okay, they need to play another game because they're a bit late getting started. This is um, Theo against um, 
Queen is live. live, isn't it? It's yeah, that's live. Oh, thanks, Cameron, um, for your second game link. So we've got that one now as well. And then I think I'm just missing a couple of games. So I'll just go back to that game we were looking at. That's live. So we'll, let's focus on this for a minute. Yeah, we're not going to make too many comments at this stage. <laughs> but um, I'm sure. When more pawns get swapped off, it does become easier. So I'm sure Keith's looking happy for chances of... Well, it's, it's paradoxical because the only, the only way to win is to actually swap pawns off. Because, of the, you know, you, you've yeah. got to do something. Okay, well, um, we'll and that's a reasonable chance. I mean, that was a reasonable that chat after they finish, then. Um, yeah, yeah, but that sounds good. Yeah, I'm really excited for you to look. I've got all the links to the games, so we can go through them all um, briefly. And then, like I can say, if anyone wants to play a slower version of this, you can do that after the class because you've got each other's usernames now. We tried to match you with somebody similar level to you. Yeah, this is really good for your chest to do this because it's not like some some freak study position it's it's something that you a lot of chess comes down to this is it like, these kind of endings are very common very common to get four v three so it's good to just know how to play how to try to win it's equally important to know how to draw yeah definitely i mean i've had this a few times and actually i had it um fairly recently or well, recently being like <laughs> there's not much chess going on i had it in like one of my last tournaments before all of this happened and yeah i won with white and it's like there's lots of tricks it's quite funny it's like you just got to play and be confident and if black yeah there's some long-term strategies there's a very interesting model game between Pickett and kasparov where i think Pickett did actually beat kasparov and there's some techniques there's some methods where, um, which I think, you know, white needs to know to make serious progress and black needs to know how to deal with it. Um, there's some techniques that are important. Uh, I mean, it's completely crazy how many times I've had this ending. It's ridiculous how many times I've had it. How many do you think you've had it, Robert? I mean, look, I, well, 4v3 of different, you know, the, these, four, these, these seven pawns, I've probably, in, let's say in FIDE rated games and weekend tournaments, let's say in you know, or, or classical, you know, official classical games, maybe 180, 200, 220, you know, some, some that kind of figure. Wow. Just a specific ending with just only rooks. Yeah, well, I, I feel like Keith does um, prepare for end games when he play, chooses his openings. <laughs> and that's why, you know, they're more popular with him because he's so, so familiar with what to do. And, you know, he'd be, He'd be really trying to win with White in these positions, even though he knows if his opponent defends really well, it, it should be a draw. But you that's know, chess, isn't it? I mean, chess, is, chess itself is like that. Chess itself is a draw, but you're looking for yeah. I mean, nobody nobody seriously thinks chess is a win by force for White. So therefore, you're just looking to create practical chances. That's all. That's all any chess is. Yeah. No. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see which games are still going on. So we've got. Um, QED um, against Theo. This end game, Hebden won. I forced Hebden win this end game in the British Online Championship recently. It's a draw, but, but White can just play forever. <laughs> okay, So we've got this game. Yeah, we'll keep focused on this game then, um, Keith, and then I'll see yeah. if the games are still going on. Yeah, there's F6. Yeah, this is the best the best practical chance this, to move F6. Yeah, I never think that I'll, I'll just agree a draw because I can't win. You, you should play on and play on. And, you know, if you, if you try for three hours and it ends up being a draw, it doesn't matter. You know, you need to play to win. And this is what Keith does. He'll just keep going. He doesn't, and he doesn't think, oh, it's so annoying, I'm playing a lower-rated player. He just keeps going and keeps wearing them down. And I think if you can learn that skill from a young age, you're going to be a great player. Lots of kids try to rush and force the issue, and that's when things go wrong. 
Uh, patience. Patience. Yeah, patience. <laughs> oh, look, we're in a King and Pauline game. I thought oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to have um, more lessons on King and Pauline games and different <laughs> things. But let's keep our eyes on that game from before because I was quite interested. Uh, where is it? I've got so many open. Oh, well, that's interesting. We've got oh, Queen. My word. <laughs> <laughs> that's got a Queen. <laughs> wow. I don't know, this looks like a theoretical draw, but what, but it also looks like it could quite go on for about another two hours. Yeah, because that's the other thing. Do we know how to play a queen versus a rook? <laughs> There's so many end games, and if you if you know how to defend them or to draw them, it's perfect. Because at the end of the day, you would have been playing in over the board chess for a long time, so you're going to be tired. So knowledge of end games is really important, um, or at least just knowing the ideas. So I showed some positions to Keith before we started you know, the um, pre-work that you guys did. And Keith wasn't like, oh, that's a theoretical draw because of this. He was just kind of saying, right, okay. And he was just going on principles and he doesn't learn theory in end games. He just learns ideas and principles and he applies them um, thinking about the position. So if you can learn to do that, that would be really good. Okay, that's an interesting yeah. one. Let's see if that game was still, oh, this one's still going on as well, Keith. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa, what's happening now? Well, they don't have much time left. <laughs> <laughs> defense. This is good chess by both players. Yeah, both very good players. Yeah, I feel a bit sorry for the time they've got left. But like I say, <laughs> if you're enjoying this and you want to, um, you know, challenge your opponent in a different um, time control after the class, then please do. I think um, I want to encourage you to do that. It's a great way to improve. Training games are absolutely fantastic. Look at this quality of this chess, sir. Right. Oh, five seconds there. Oh, I'd be stressing out now with the clock, uh, clock time. <laughs> hmm. Oh, even Alex is watching this game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a draw. Threefold. Mm. I think it's winning. I think it's winning. I think Rook G8 check is winning, I think. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Well, um, let's just see if everyone's finished their games, then we can go through them all. So we can learn so much from these games. And I think it's going to be really enjoyable for the children because they're actually their games. Um, so let's yeah. see if anyone's still playing. Okay, this game's still going on. It's Queen versus Rook. So let's just... Wait until all the games. Oh wow, that pawn survived. I thought well, last time oh, the pawn was doomed. <laughs> yeah, it's finished in a draw. Um, this game's over. That game's over. This one's still in play. They started a little bit later, so let's just watch the end of this one. And I've got, but all all the games open in different tabs. So once all the games are finished, we'll go through them. And you know, if you've got a pen and paper, I'd get them out and listen to what Keith has to say about your game. And you can learn a lot. Cameron wants us to look at his. Okay, fine. Um, where is the link? I've got a lot of things. Oh, wow. More progress. I'm impressed by the progress players make of making in this end. Yeah. And that was stalemate. What? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Have a rook. Have a rook. Oh, dear. Right. Um, you've, probably got it, you've probably got it auto from a queen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe all two promotes on. Um, okay. Uh, let's, I think this is the last game. So if there's any other game going on, then just let me know because I think this is the last one. And then we'll go for all of the games. And I think you should probably get a pen out and write some notes when Keith goes through your game because you can learn a lot. And then I would encourage you to play the same opponent after the class in a, a longer time control. You can master this, then you're going to be doing very well in end games, and you'll be confident knowing you can draw, or you'll be confident knowing you can attempt to win. And there's a little bit of a joke, but most adults say just go to the end game against juniors because juniors are bad at end games. So you don't want to be that person that's bad at end games. <laughs> <laughs> you're all really good players. It's what they say in Russia. They say if you're playing a British player, play for the ending because they're all, all English players are rubbish at the end. 
unfortunately, we have got a reputation for not being very good at the end game. Okay, so the last game is close to finishing now. Yeah, because if the king went back there to the eighth rank, then he was going to queen and then skewer. But I think we should be fine now. I better not say any moves because the game's still in progress. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm assuming white's going to play a certain move now. <laughs> hmm. He's taking his time, which is good. It's good to take your time. Good, yeah, that's what I was expecting. Mm Okay, um, can you just resign now, please? Because I'm pretty sure White can win that. Thank you. Um, okay, great. So um, let's um, go through these games then. Um, firstly, I'm just going to ask Keith a question. Um, so where is the link to the study? I seem to have gone off it. Hang on. I oh, know that's another game. I just need to open the study again. Um, thank you, Ryan. He's just... Um, that. Oh, okay, so um, basically, I'm going to ask Keith before we look at the games. I'm going to ask Keith what. Um, let's just do it. right. Can you just tell us a bit about this position then? So, if it was black to play when they started the game, um, everyone's been playing the same position. Um, what do you have to say? Like, what think, are the key features? Okay, so I think it's easier for black to draw if black can achieve the move h5. Um, if, if, if it's white to play, white should try and prevent H5. I think there was a, a few games which went exactly how, you know, what yeah, white play, understood. Play H5 um, on their first move. Um, so here, yes, um, Theo did. So well done, Theo. Um, do you want yeah, to it's play? very important. Um, and and, and if, if, it were, if it were white to move, then white, white would play either Rook H5 or G4 to prevent H5. I mean, you know, this is... We're talking about best winning chances because whatever you know, even if white, even if black doesn't play H five, black's still drawing, but it just yeah, it just becomes a little bit harder, a little bit harder um, until you know it it becomes actually at some moment lost if you're not careful. So can you um, explain to them why H five is a good move? Please? Okay, so um, white wants to white doesn't want to swap all the pawns off and end up one pawn against no pawns because that's nearly always going to be a draw. So, so what White would like to do is, is keep on advancing the pawns and gain lots of space without having to swap any off. So White would like to play like a, uh, G4 and King G2 and King G3 and H4 and H5 and then F4 and so on. White would like to keep on going forward and more, more and more forwards. And then, and then the defence becomes really, really difficult. Um, but what, what Black wants to do is force White to swap pawns off. So by playing H5, the only way White can can make progress past that is to anyway play g4 at some moment now that i think there was one game where one of the players played with white played h4 in this position now the problem is if white plays h4 in a position like this is that then um there's no central way to achieve g4 so therefore white can't make any progress at all here white can't ever try to, it's really difficult for white to get a passport because you know the moment white plays g4 black will, play, will take it and then there'll be a very weak h pawn and, and the pawns will be all broken up it'll be really really hard to play for a win so actually when black plays h5 white should shouldn't play h4 white should play for g4 and try to keep the three pawns connected so white should be playing like king g2 h3 and g4 and at least kick three against two and some winning chances so first of all black should play h5 secondly when black does play h5 white shouldn't be playing h4 white should be playing the position with king g2 h3 and then at some point g4 um but but you know it's you know the the, the, the position that we're picking Kit beat one of the one of the greatest players ever, Gary Kasparov, was a position where black had h5 and g6, and white achieved um white achieved h2, g3, f4, and e5, which is probably white's best position. White didn't move any of the 
atrial G point, right? Just put the pawns on it in a chain from H to to E5. And, and then brought the king in using the rook to shield, brought the king into F5. And and that became, and that turned out to be very, very difficult for, for black to defend. Um, the idea of eventually when you've got that position, if you imagine a position when the pawns are on F4 and E5, in that position with the king up on G5, which Pickett managed, then white starts to threaten things like F5 and then E6. Okay. Now, so, should we, so should we just go through the games now then? Yeah, let's look at the games. Yeah, right, so, yeah, yeah I've got, on a specific got, situation. Uh, um, 10 to go for, I think, or maybe even 12. I can't remember. But I think there were six games going. So we'll, we'll go through fairly quickly. And obviously, remember, the children didn't have much time. And in an ideal world, they would have had, you know, half an hour at least each. Um, but yeah, this is just blitz, but it's just to get an idea. I did advise yeah. you to practice it again at a slower time control. So um, here, um, Black played H5, which is very good, so well done. And then white played rook b4. Um, any comments about that, Keith? It's fine. I mean, nothing wrong with that. With that. I mean, as long as you don't play pawn to h4, you can't do too much wrong. Can't do too much wrong. I mean, it's a theoretically drawn position, so that's fine. It's all fine. Yeah, I don't really like going with the king first. I'd rather sit the king, keep the king tidy. I'd rather go G6 and King G7 and just sit there like that and ask White what he's doing, what they're doing. Um, I don't like King G6 because it's, it's a little bit cumbersome. The King's kind of getting in the way a little bit. Okay, yeah, that's a very good point. It's really not much harmony. I mean, you're, you're running the risk of like of like Rook B5 and Rook G5 check. And you kind of, the King's in the way of the harmony between the pawns. So I'd rather just put a pawn on G6. But I think it's still just a battle, right? I don't, I don't think it's a losing move or anything like that. Okay, we're okay. Yeah, just, just, so yeah, no, I'll, I'll, if you just keep playing, I'll comment when something yeah, interesting. Yeah, you can't comment on every move of every game. That's a good point. No, so, there'll, there'll just come a point when there's keep, a, an important yeah. decision. Yeah, I think the, the, the best place for the white rook is actually d5. And the reason is because... For white to make progress, white needs to use the king. Now, if you don't put the rook on, on the d file, then as soon as the king emerges on e3, black will just kind of start checking it. Um, you need to block block at some point, block a check with the rook. On, like if there's a check on the third rank or the fourth rank or somewhere, you need to be able to block with the rook to try and make progress. So, but okay, there's nothing, let's plan some more moves. There's nothing massively interesting happening yet. Okay, this, okay, this is interesting. What, it's, a, it's a reasonable try, breaking up the black pawns. It's, it's not a bad idea. Okay, well, you'd like to go e6, but it's not for, that just loses a pawn to rook c7 to e7 and then take it off. Yeah. So, so this is the yeah, this is the best try. Now you should be checking the king back probably. And now, yeah, no, no, this you know, this is king g2 is pointless because you need to use the king. So um, you need to go king e3. Um, but the problem is if you go king e3 here, then rook c3 check, and that, it, it's you're not really sure where you're going because black can just keep checking. So. Um, the move I would play here is rook d5, and then black, and then and then when black does nothing, say rook a2, then I would go king e3. Um, in order to meet rook check with um, king e4, rook check, rook d3. I mean, if rook, sorry, rook, rook, rook check, rook d4, and then I'm gonna, I'm just gonna try and go f3 and g4 and just see what happens. Just try and get a passport, you know, try and get a. I think the best you can hope for is kind of maybe h4 and g4 against f6 and just hope to do something with the pass pawn. But yeah, that's like I say, it is a theoretical draw yeah. and there aren't there aren't many ways to try and win. So let's let's go on a bit yeah. to get maybe it goes interesting. Maybe maybe something happens. That, yeah, let's just see because obviously we've got lots to get through, so we can't do yeah. our analysis of all of the In games. general, the black king should stay amongst the pawns. Okay, yeah. So okay, f3. Reasonable try, f3, yeah. G4, yeah, G4 is a good try. You should try that. Yeah, I like this. Okay. Notice in this position, rook takes f6 is only a draw because rook takes f6, g5 check, and and you left with a rook form, which is obviously a draw. So that's you can't, that's no good. Yeah, this is still a theoretical a draw. Quite should be reasonably easy. And now it's becoming more difficult. Now it may be close to being lost. 
This is this is this is now the white's best try here, and this is really interesting. Is white's best try is to play rook c7. Now, what's the idea of rook c7? Anybody? Should we see if Aaron knows since it's his game? Um, Aaron, do you want to speak? What do you think the idea of rook c7 might be? Uh, rook f7. Yeah. Um, no, I'm trying to look for resources. This might just be lost, actually. Um, okay, so let me try. What one weird idea? Let me try rook b5 check. Um, so. <laughs> Let's keep just, it. Yeah, you can tell. Him. Unfortunately, my star mate trap of rook f I, thought, I was like, "Wait, I just want to." It doesn't work because of pawn me, so I had to be careful there. But yeah. Yeah, and now and now my, my idea is to try and get some weird theoretical to draw rook g five, but you've got rook h seven check. So this is completely lost. So what? So this this defense doesn't work. So actually, I think that white might be winning after rook c seven to f seven. Yeah. Um, I think it might just be a win. Okay, brilliant. And um, like I say, we, we don't want, we need to get through uh, at least one of everyone's games. So um, let's just continue with the game. Um, oh yeah, so he's he's got this in anyway. Oh, you did this. You made yeah, you did this. Yeah. yeah that's okay. Um, okay. Now it's winning. Now it's winning. But you have to be very very careful about style match. Like I say, I drew with um, with Dave 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 Ledger, who's a very strong player, um, but he just. Allowed a stand right trick. You've got to, with these two pawns, when you're two pawns up, these two pawns, it's, it's not straightforward to win. So I'm interested to see how he managed to win this. If he did win it, yeah, he did win it. I mean, hasn't Black just made a big mistake there? Because quite yeah. Well, this is. I think this is one now. Yeah, I mean, let me can get to f5. Was um yeah a little bit wrong. Oh, now here, there you go. Slow there, go there. This moment, is it Black to play here? Um, no, White to play. Okay, what was the last move? Um, rook to b1. Okay, so black never had the, the move when that rook was on g5. g7, sorry. Oh, yeah, white played king h5 here, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so there's no chance for stamina. Okay, so he's kind of looking for tricks, you see. He doesn't give up. If he was black here, he wouldn't be thinking, you oh, know, I've lost. He'd be looking for tricks, and that's what you guys need to do. You need to be resilient. I mean, to be fair to the players, they have about 15 seconds left here. Um, so they don't really have much time to think. Um, oh, okay, okay, so rook h1 check's a mistake. So let's put that rook back, and then instead of rook h1 check, when white goes king g6, no, in this position rather, sorry, yeah. in this position, let's go, I want to go rook b5 check. Yeah. And now how would you, how would you try and win this with white? Okay, we'll move it to Aaron because it's his game. So Aaron, any idea what you play here? I suppose I have to go g5. G5. And now I wait. Now I wait with rook c5. This is really important for, I mean, this position is a really important position to look at. So even if we spend a few a few minutes on this one. Okay. This, you, you can I do rook f7? Rook f7. Okay, carry on. I'll, I'll pass again. Now king g6. Okay, I'll go rook check. Now I'll block with for rook. And then I'll go rook to the back rank. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. This position is really rich in drawing stalemate possibilities. I'm not sure what happens after h7, rook, b6. Rook, okay, try h7, and then rook, b6, yeah. Maybe now I move my king. Where to? <laughs> uh, I suppose f5. Oh, no. Yeah, then... I'm not sure. Either. Yeah, rook f5, I'll give another check and either repeat the position or win the, the h pawn. 
This yeah. is really good for everyone to see that even if you're two pawns down, don't give up. There are loads of tricks that Keith's explaining, stalemate tricks all over the place. Um, but Keith would have been it's very, very hard to win. It's very, very hard to win. It's winning, but it's not. It's not. It's not like you don't just go up the board of the pawns and get a queen really easily. It's, it's, you know, you need to know certain techniques to win this. It's, it's, uh, so I mean, just a king h5 here, but um. Okay, king h5 here. I'll go. I'll pin the pawn. Rook takes rook. No, rook takes, I oh, guess, yeah, rook takes such a draw. So, oh, is that a draw? It is a draw, yeah, that's a draw as well, yeah. Yeah, so I've got two ways to draw that position. Um, but yeah, I mean, it keeps the way is also drawing. Um, yeah, so I mean, one takeaway here for you guys is, you know, if you're two pawns up, you're not winning easily, you need to watch out. And if you're the one that's losing, you need to be resilient because there's loads of chances to draw, as keeps demonstrating. But we haven't found a way to win yet. That's the most important. We, we haven't found a way to win for a while yet. So actually, it's your game. Do you want to show how you would try and win? Because you haven't you haven't played eight seven. So it's it's way to play here. Can you win this position? I think Aaron was a bit stuck at this point. Um, not surprisingly, it's a tricky position. Um, Keith's you can one of the things you can do without losing too much. You can try things because you've got you know you've got you've got fifty moves before you have to move a pawn. So you're not gonna you're not. This is one position where you can you, you don't panic, don't get impatient. Just if you think, oh no, I don't know how to win this. Just try a few things. If, um, so just, you know. Sorry, so, you can talk now. Are we coming back, can we unmute both the players in this game? Yeah, Aaron's unmuted at the moment. Cool. I'm free to talk in the moment, yeah. Um, I suppose I'd probably try some, bring the rook to v file with rook e6 and then. Okay, let's look at that. So, yeah, that's a good try. I like that. Yeah, Theo, if you want to make any comments, you can speak as well since it was your game. Okay, I'll go King Eight. I'll go King G eight. Okay. Oh, sorry. What? Yeah. King, King G eight. Yeah. I thought this is this position is very valuable to understand how to play this position from both sides. How to make it as awkward as possible when you're black, and also how to also win with white. And it, then I guess King F six. F six. Okay. I will go Rook check on F eight. Doug, like, yeah, we need to try and get that rook on f5 so if we can try and get king h5 g6. Maybe king e5. Oh, okay. Um, so I can't yeah. let that. So let me think. And there we go. Okay, uh, I'll play king h7. Oh, then I think rook e7 check. It becomes a lot easier for white. So um, what about if we... Keep the king shielded from the tracks. Yeah, what about let's go let's go rook let's go rook a8. Let's go rook a8. I know it looks passive, but okay, well okay, g6 now for g6, okay. Play your g6. Yeah. I'll I will wait again, I'll go rook b8. Um okay. I mean your position looks perfect, but you've still got to win it. <laughs> now oh, I'm not sure if king f6 works or not of g7 from the audience we'll let um, oh yeah g7 you want to play g7 was it sorry oh uh, uh, no i was not willing i was not gonna play that it's a bit risky because you, you you're losing the flexibility of your pawns it's not yeah. gonna be ever, ever play eight, yeah so. the simplest simplest way is just rookie seven like instead of g7 you want to go rookie seven yeah Okay, so um, I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna give you a, a whole load of checks. I'm gonna go rook check. I suppose king f six. Okay, that whole load of checks just turned out to be only yeah. one check. Okay, yeah, rook there check, and now, now I'll go back again if you want to a better move. Might still not one. Come on, guys. Um, yeah, I can... <laughs> I'm just sort of showing trying to show you how difficult it is against best defense. Um, I think I've forgotten who it was, but there was a 2700 um, a few weeks ago that was two pawns up and just drew in a rook. Oh my! Wow. Somebody wants to Maybe go there's rook d6. If h7, if someone's playing h7 or yeah, someone's yeah. playing d6, what, you want to play rook d6 or h7? Uh, 
Um, look at D6, Aaron said. Uh, well, we can look at both, but then we do. Well, okay, A7, I'll go King A2. We'll look at A7, I'll we'll play King A2. That just looks too risky. With For stalemate chances. Yeah, lots of stalemate. Exactly. For example, for example, if King F7 here, hoping for rookie eight check, I just go rook F8 check, and it's becoming yeah. really awkward. Um, I think I think that will conclude that for now, just because we haven't given anyone else a chance. But thanks, Theo and um, Aaron, for sharing your thoughts on that. Well, as you can see, I mean, what I suggest you do then, because that is a very important thing: look it up, go and look it up, play this, play out this ending yourself against the computer. Or look, for example, because it's really important to understand this. So go, go look it up. Your opponent, if they'd like to play it in a better time, yeah. After the class. Look up rook H and G against against rook. And look, look, work out, look, work out how to win it because it's not, it's not trivial. Yeah, and work out how to try. I think that the H seven is wrong, by the way, in that situation. The only time you play H seven is if you can follow up with King H six. So if you had a king on G five, if if you were able to achieve King G five, so that the winning technique is actually i'll just tell you quickly is you put the king on g5 the rook on e5 and then you play h7 check so if we just go back a couple of minutes well let's so voluntarily play rook e5 here um yeah i, I put, put the okay block that uh, yeah that's yeah put, put the white rook on e5 sorry i've got to i'll just mess around for a minute yeah right. put yeah rook e5 and then and then now you're taking back right mate so black's got to stop the back right mate and now you go king g5 this is the key move and black can only wait and then you go h7 check and then you go king h6 and 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 if black pins are pawn, you've got rookie eight mate so you've either got g7 mate or so you kind of bring the king around that way you don't worry about stone mate because you've got the threat of mate comes first so that's so you so the key thing to remember is you put your king and your rook on the fifth rank there are other ways but they're messy and complicated this if you remember king on g5 rook on the fifth rank it doesn't matter where on the fifth rank then and then play h6 check and then you win brilliant that's that's really instructive for the whole class i think that's really important um so yeah thank you keith that's amazing right i'm going to move on to some of the other games because i think some of the other players will want to have a look at Definitely. that game so the next one i've got is um ed versus um hang on who was ed playing joe so ed's playing joe here and this one um started from the same position um ed correctly played the first move that we've already discussed um, and then I'm just I'm just going to play some moves, and then Keith, when yeah. you want to um, yeah. comment, just tell me. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we're going to try and learn something different from this game. Um, so yeah, the king's going. There's nothing up there for the king. So why should we bring the king and keeping king centralized? Right. Okay. Why should we play? Why should we print a king on e3 and a pawn on f4 and then a pawn on e5? And that's that's very that's very that's very very um difficult to defend. Okay, brilliant. So we can learn from this game. The king's gone the wrong way. Um, you could still come back. Now you must defend h two. Now you must play rook d two here. If you don't play rook d two, you you okay. Well, that's a bad play as well. But you really need to. You're in danger of losing this because your king's gone too far away. Yeah, I think I should um I should unmute um Ed and Joe in case they want to yeah. speak. Yeah, you guys can speak if you want to. Okay. Um, so um yeah, I think, yeah I think Joe, your king's gone the wrong side. The king's the king needs to be amongst your pawns. Yeah. Um, black two, yeah, rookie one's a good move, and our rookie two's a good move, and our rookie three's a good move. Is this the game? Are falling and the king can't up over the wrong side. Yeah, why should just be, why should we plan to draw this now? <laughs> yeah. Maybe King C four and just yeah, King C four and just try and get a draw. Is this losing? Um, Works, isn't it? Yeah. Might be losing. Yeah. Um, and G five, yeah. Five. Favorite. And, Got it in, Ed. We're very proud of you. <laughs> <Congrats>. <laughs> yeah, well played. G5 is always a good move. King E5, this is well played by Matt. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so, um, and, yeah, and wins. And wins, yeah? <laughs> yeah, black one. Actually, is this winning? Is this winning? King E4. Black actually ran out of time. Uh, um, okay, let's look at King E4. Um, 
Okay, now I'm not sure. Now, how, how does Black Swan win this? Is this a win or is it a draw? Um, oh, maybe F6. Oh, F6. F6 looks winning. So, you know, you must, well, you must try and get the opposition. So, King E3. King F5. A oh, pawn f5 maybe, yeah, maybe pawn f5. Yeah, king f5, king f3 looks like no progress. No, exactly. Because king e5, let's look at king e5, king g4, no, king g4, king e4, king takes pawn. Um, now, king f4, king f4, no, f5 is premature, king f4, and now f5, and now king g3, is that winning? I really haven't even calculated it. I looked. I've got one. No, 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 no,
So brilliant. Thanks, guys. So let's go to the next game. Um, so I've got um, this game here, which is um, Ryan against Kushal. So I'll enable you guys to speak if you want to say anything. Um, Ryan against Kushal. Let me just. There should be a draw. Did something happen on the clock? Um, maybe. <laughs> it isn't. It was a draw. It was a draw. Yeah. It, it was, was a draw. Okay. So King F8 was played at the beginning. Obviously, we know now uh, what we should play um, instead. H Wait, why is H5 a good move again? Um, because White wants to make a lot of White wants to just push the pawns without having to make exchanges. White would like to play G4, Rook B5, and just and just make a lot of pawn moves and make a, gain a lot of space. So if you practice absolutely nothing, then then we can just go, we White, White can we'll give White a lot of moves. We'll go G, we'll go Rook B5, we'll go King G2, we'll go G4, we'll go H4, we'll go H5, possibly even G5, but we'll get or H5, and then you stop you stop making exchanges. Because if you picture a position where white pawns on h5, if black then plays g6, that may be, that that will probably be a lost a lost um, rook and pawn ending because after h g f g, it'll white will have e e f and g against h and g, and white will have the chance to play for two pretty plus pawns with e4 f4 g4 and f5. So, so in an, in in the nature of the position in a structure. Is inherent the, the the risk of white getting two pass pawns. So so yeah. so once white's pawns gone to h5, black loses the option of playing g6 ever. So black runs out of pawn moves, and meanwhile white can move everything forward slowly, like a space invader, just yeah. slowly sure, trimming yeah. it all up. I think it's um, just another way of explaining it as well is that by playing h5, um, I think Keith was trying, trying to get to that. You're restricting white from getting play. If white can push all the pawns up the board. White's getting closer to victory, but if you can, and getting a pass pawn, which is what White ultimately wants to do, but if you can stop that by playing H5 and, you know, try and force some exchanges, then you get closer to getting a draw. Um, so, yeah, cool. That's yeah. Let me know, Keith, when it gets exciting. And um, obviously, Keith's going to be saying now that Black should have been trying to get H5 in, but obviously, you didn't know that idea, but now you've learned something. So, I'm really pleased to that Keith's taught you that important plan in end games. All fine. Okay. Ah, well done. We got it in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is good now. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, this is good now. Now Black's got a, a good setup. Okay, well played. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, that was a reasonable game. That was a reasonable. I don't think, I don't think it was ever. I don't think it ever strayed away from a theoretical draw. Black just had to be a little bit accurate. So that was, that was well played both players. Uh, okay, yeah. So um, just remember that idea at the beginning. Um, okay, brilliant. And um, because we have sort of run out of time, so we're going to go fairly fast. But if there's anything that um, hasn't come up in the previous games, we can learn from these games. We'll just go through the last ones quickly. So I'm probably not going to be able to go through white and black for everyone, but at least you've all had. Um, a chance. So this is um, Harry versus Florian. So I'll unmute you two if you want to make any comments. And it started with King to F8 by Florian. But again, I'm sure Florian's learned that H5 is the best move. So we won't go over that again. Yeah, I, I was trying to, to get him in the meeting there. Like... Yeah, you succeeded. I mean, um... The black black in, black should usually hold back with the king, but keep the king back behind the pawns. Yeah, because I, I, and in my second game with black, I tried to get a mating net, but it didn't work because he took because I pushed my pawn trying to go g4 mate because I cut off the king going back. Are oh, you playing to win with black? Yeah, I think the problem here. Look at the clock time. You're both playing like. You didn't have much time anyway, but you're both playing like rapid, and then suddenly Harry gets checkmate with five, four minutes fifty on the clock. Remember, you only started with five. Now, Harry, if you can slow down, you'll improve massively because you're so good, but you're just playing too fast. So I know you did mate your opponent, Florian. You rushed as well, so don't be influenced by your opponent playing quickly. Well, maybe instead of playing eight, you're going to play f three then eight three. Yeah, um, that's, just, that's just not unnecessary. Yeah, exactly. I mean, instead of King G4, F5 is still maybe, maybe drawing just yeah, about. But because we're out of time, I'll probably fast forward that one because that was a bit of a mistake. But I'm sure you've learned by now what how Black should defend that 
Um, so let's move on to the next game. Just give everyone a chance. So um, now we've got um, Cameron versus Sophie here. Um, and again, we need to be remembering H5. Um, probably said that a lot now. So hopefully you'll be able to apply it if you get Rook End games. Um, I'm just going to play through the moves. And if Keith finds a critical moment and wants to say something. Yeah, I think after F5 check, the Black King is probably safer going back. I think you don't want to you don't want to risk going amongst those pawns. You just you're risking. I mean, it may not be a mate by force, but you're risking it being you're risking a mating attack. I think Cameron played this very well, didn't he? We, we I think mm. the way he played it, he actually managed to get. Um, actually, Rook H one and actually go, go back a couple of moves. That there was okay in this position. Why to play? So if you play Rook H one here, you threaten mate. you threaten um, G four mate immediately. Yeah, I think maybe he went F1 and then realised and then did it. But the Black King, after Rook F1, Rook D3 check. And then G5 check holds, I think. <laughs> because here it's Black, if what you don't take on pass on, then Black gets mate. <laughs> <laughs> you actually take that off with the H pawn and you get mated, but H takes mate. <laughs> um, but but black but black's escaped here by because after f takes king takes g6 and black escapes so just this is a really interesting position it's like just go back a one move this is like both players are playing for mate here so if we go instead of rook f1 if we go rook h1 yeah. here right. rook h1 here now the only move for black now he's not in g4 mate if rook check king f4 so rook check rook check king f4 let's play rook d3 check king f4 now you're in G4 mate. So the only way to stop that is G5 check. Oh, but now. <laughs> and now H takes mate. That's so, so therefore, Rook D3 check isn't playable. So just go take that one move. But after Rook H1, Rook H1, then G, G5 is the only way to stop. And now, how does White win this? It's Joe's still G4 mate. So actually, it's forced mate in all variations. So the so lesson the, of that game then is the king needs to go. The moral of all of these is when you're playing black, don't move your king in front of the pawn for two reasons. One, you can get mated. The other is you're ruining, you, 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 haven't, you lose a chance to, to put your pawns in a harmonious way. You want your pawns to be on a nice little chain all defending each other. But if your king gets in the way, then your, your, your king's sometimes going where your pawns want to be. Keith, Adam suggested just going D4 first. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. I got Rook H2 first before the mate. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> prolong it if you've only got one second left and there's no increment more forcing right okay so there we go we can learn from that game keep your king safe um this was their game two we've already been through one so i want to give everyone um just one game because we are um out of time um and that was adam's next game so i think has everyone had a chance have i have i been through at least one of your two games um I Anybody it. being completely ignored in this little? No, I think we've we've been through at least one of them. So, and part of you is we didn't get time to go through your white and black games, but there's loads that you can learn from those positions. And like I say, um, we tried to match you with a similar level opponent. So, if you guys fancy um playing them again with a longer time control and applying what we've taught you, then hopefully um you'll be able to improve your rock and games massively. Um, because it's um ten minutes late, I'm going to um just say thank you very much to Keith. And um, we're going to finish there, but um, hope you enjoyed it. And we're going to send some notes out after this as well. So bye, everyone. Well played, well played everybody. Good chess. <laughs> yeah, good players. Keep making progress. Good luck in the future. See you again. Playing one of my symbols. Buy my book, Arkle's Endings. Oh, yeah. Keith, Keith, we need to discuss who's going to get the book because he's got a signed copy that he's going to... And gonna... the rest of you, go and buy it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to learn more, yeah, it's available. Great. Okay. Fantastic. Bye, everyone. And um, yeah, see you soon. See you guys. I really got it. Brilliant. <laughs>